following is the 665th Arizona Racing Commission meeting held on November 8th, 2018 at 1110 West Washington, Suite 250, Phoenix, Arizona, 85007. Good morning. Can we please take our seats? It the utmost pleasure to call to order the 665th regular Arizona Racing Commission meeting. Today is November the 8th, 2018. Cassie, would you like to call? Thank you. Commissioner Garay, <coughs> absent. Commissioner Heupel? Here. Commissioner Lawless? Here. Commissioner McClintock? Here. Thank you, and good morning. And please, as a public service, please silence your or turn all cell phones off. If you must take a call or have a conversation, please take it out in the hall. Thank you. Your show, sir. Okay, thank you. Action item under number B. Uh, number one is consideration of a removal of the 140-day race, 140-day race day requirement for Rito Park Racetrack, ARS 5-112 C D and E. So in October. In the October 11th commission meeting, the commission had a public discussion on this matter. However, the posted October 2018 agenda utilized an incorrect statutory reference, ARS 5-111 D and E versus ARS 5-112 C D and E, which constituents have urged was an improper posting of the agenda item, possibly making the commission's decision void. Then on October 13th, there were possible discussions of, on the commissioner's previous October 11th action may have taken place at a properly noticed meeting at Turf Paradise, during which no official commission business was to take place. Commission members have individually provided statements of the day's discussions of the, to the Division of Racing. Any member of the public wishing to obtain the written description of the Commission's deliberations, consultations, and decisions that preceded the re and related to its October 13, 2018 discussion may request a copy from Racing Secretary Cassie Goodwin. The written detailed description will also be included in the minutes of this meeting and made available on the Division of Racing's website. You all probably know what that is. Now, the reason this came up was I thought the emergency was the fact that no track in Arizona raced 140 days. That's why we were removing the 140-day race consideration. Since that time, I found out that Turf Paradise was exempt to that ruling and because of Maricopa County, which we didn't, I didn't know at the time. So I asked for this to be put back on the agenda today for further discussion. And I think there's some people here who are prepared to discuss this. Would you like to hear from me first, Sarah? That'd be fine. For the record, Jay Wells, uh, Retail Racetrack and Retail Park Foundation. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's deja vu all over again. It seems like every time we make a step forward, there's a, a, an effort to take, make it take a step back. Uh, you know, we said in the last meeting that we or the Prima County is the only county that still has this 140 live race day restriction. Uh, we have been lobbying since the uh, dog track bill, which I think you know, put the dome rule to sunset this coming December. And uh, so the first, uh, when that bill was going through, uh, A.J. Mesnard, who at the time was, uh, was not Speaker of the House, but just was the sponsor of the bill, in a meeting where several members of the audience uh, were in attendance, I was on a conference call at that meeting, and basically he said that he would allow the bill to go forward as long as the stakeholders uh, would all agree that there would be some remedy made before the sunset. The next year, we did ask the legislature to uh, basically give us uh, one way or the other direction, meaning 
Uh, as you all know, that the statutes basically said state any sort of population differences between counties that have a million and a half people or more, meaning Maricopa, those counties that have 500,000 to a million and a half, meaning Pima, and counties with a half a million or less, meaning all the rest of them. So in an effort to open up Yavapai several years ago, uh, uh, the Senate passed a uh, sponsor of a bill that basically eliminated any restrictions on the smaller counties when it comes to having off-track bedding parlors or more than 20 uh, dark days at the actual facility, the racetrack. Uh, prior to that, Turf Paradise, I'm assuming, uh, the current management, had lobbied to have their restriction modified, and I do believe their restriction was 156, 157 days. Vince, can you tell me that? Yeah. 156 days. So Maricopa <laughs> County, by that that uh, population was ba demographic, was basically required to run 156 days, and they had it modified to say they can run fewer days if they have an agreement with the representative horsemen's uh, organization, meaning the HBPA. So that has been in, in effect for how many years now? Five years plus. Five years plus. So in essence, they were able to modify the agreement with the HBPA. So we went to the legislature and said, we'll take either. You know, we're the middle child. We're the one with the population that's in the, in the uh, sixth of the state's population. And uh, so we felt like that it was a, a prudent request to make to the legislature lectures, that we would indeed take either the, the uh, restriction of having the horsemen uh, be in agreement with the number of days that we were required to run. But 140 days has never, ever, ever happened in Pima County. And the way that this evolved to be that restriction in Pima County was at the initial time that they negotiated for having off-track betting parlors, the dog track and the current manager, management, uh, uh, Vince, I think, believe is the only person who was involved in it, but they basically came in and said, no, we're going to put 140 live race days in Pima County. And what that did was eliminated Rito Racetrack being a candidate to operate parlors because dog track ran 365. So by default, they got to operate the parlors in Pima County. And the dome rule was put in place, so by the very nature that the dog track got the rights to run the parlors and Rieto was boxed out, the dog track got the parlors, but, but since they were a dog track, they could not negotiate for the horse signal. So who did they have to go to to get to the horse signal? They went to Turf Paradise, and that's the way that it's been since the parlors had first opened up in Bingham County. Uh, the dome rule was meant as a bone to throw back to Rieto to give a little bit of thing. And we get 1.86% of the money. It's, it's a check for about $10,000 on average a month. And it's been shrinking as the handle is shrunk. So we, the dome rule is going to eliminate that. Well, that adds up to roughly around $160,000 a year total. And uh, uh, we do put all of our per money in purses. All of the money goes into purses. And uh, so to have that eliminate basically means we have no purse money. The gain that we made adding the Churchill Downs uh, contract from the ADW uh, is going to add somewhere around sixty to $70,000 in, in additional purse money. Our overpayment last year was $126,000. The first year we opened, our overpayment was almost $300,000. So all we've ever asked the commission to do, to do is to step in and balance the table, take away an improper restriction that was put in to box Lorito from way before I ever showed up, before I even moved into Tucson. But this is clearly an egregious uh, uh, restriction that makes the level of the playing field unlevel. I would, I would end it on one thing. Everyone always retorts with like, well, you guys only run 12 days. Well, my rebut to that is, well, of course, we can't get the money. So we are still restricted by our, per we are a commercial permittee. Every single one of the statutes required of audits, uh, filings, etc. we are burdened with, and yet we're not given the freedom to generate our own funds that the other tracks have. Yavapai coming from, a, 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 Arizona Downs coming from Yavapai with a county with a population less than a half a million, there was no question of whether they could open up parlors. And yet this antiquated statute is holding us back in the free market. Uh, we do believe this does constitute an emergency. We do believe that, I did read in some of the statements of what happened on October 13th, that there was some surprise that, uh, uh, that, that, that Turk Paradise was not restricted. But since day one, 
And since I have been up here for the last five years, I have always preached that Pima County is the only county in the state still held to this antiquated restriction. We've made several efforts to try to, and, and still have efforts ongoing, to get this balance back out. And uh, we continue to do, we will continue to do that. But if this, if the Dome Rule is not remedied, as A.J. Mesnar charged the stakeholders in, in, in that closing meeting in the dog track bill, uh, it is going to put us in danger of being able to open. So if this doesn't, if going out of business does not constitute an emergency, I don't know what in the world does. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Well, I guess my concern would be that if this was created by the legislature, then wouldn't the legislature be the body who would remedy it? Uh, you know, the, I, it boils down to the, the emergency issue, I guess, and that's what I'm grappling with. Well, I guess, uh, Chairman McClintock, if you want to uh, put a lid on Dorito, uh, uh, rescinding this vote that you gave us, is uh, the leverage alone and just being able to negotiate. Uh, were those stakeholders that were charged to come up with some compromise so that Rito was not damaged and collateral damage by trying to take the dogs down. It was never meant to be a bill that took us down, but it did take us down. And, it, and, and now that little oversight or whatever you want to call it, is now being used as a way to hammer us and put us out of business. Uh, I do believe it is, a, it, it is an emergency. I also believe that uh, we are going to continue to try to re remedy this through the uh, legislature. We have efforts. In fact, I have uh, Kevin Domena here with me today, our lobbyist. He's been working for us since last spring. And if I may request, I'd like for him to speak to you just to kind of tell you where, where we stand in the legislature since you're interested in that avenue. Is that okay? Hey, Jaden, Jaden, this is Dave Pike working here. Yes, sir. Um, I have one question before you step down. Uh, what is your total first money for the 12 days? Uh, 375000 We are averaging about $25,000 a day for the 12 days. Well, that doesn't come to 370000 $25,000. Well, that, 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 that just, the, the average, and then there are state monies, and there are monies brought in by Bank of America. We have a $10,000 sponsorship for a quarter horse race. Uh, and then last year we were a recipient of a forty thousand dollar gift uh, for the old water to Kumpus. Okay, and and what you I'm trying to follow everything. So three hundred and seventy thousand dollars of first money, you stand to lose one hundred and sixty thousand dollars when the dome goes away, but you're getting about sixty or seventy thousand from ADW. Yes, sir. But I, I will iterate again that uh, you know, if you think that we're running twenty-five thousand dollar purses, is something that we can sustain what we're trying to do. We're trying to raise our purses, not just keep them on life support. Yeah, no, I understand. All right, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. May I introduce Kevin Demille? Well, yes. But anyone who wants to address the commission needs to sign the sign-in sheet, please. So, Kevin, would you please sign the sign-in sheet before you do that? Before? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm new to the commission. For the record, uh, my name is Kevin Demento with Demento Public Affairs. We uh, represent Rito, and as Jay said, have been doing so for about six months. This experience, as I said, is new to me, and I'm, I'm, uh, I need to bring this perspective. The propriety of this is also new to me. I'm used to a much more transparent, much more open process, which we see down in the Capitol. And some of this, I think, is concerning to me as a student of public policy. I need to just put that right out there. In the last legislative session, my client was asked, and we were their agent in this respect, uh, to detach from uh, the legislative effort. Uh, we were retained late. We were asked to uh, engage, and as a courtesy, uh, asked by the sponsor uh, and by representatives of proponents of the bill to disengage, which we did. We spent that time for Reedo, most of the interim, working on issues. There is a sponsor, there is a legislative draft that will be developed for the coming session that deals in particular with the dome rule, the lack of market the lack of uh, 
contemporary statutory structure, everything from archaic uh, OTB practices, the Perry Mutual handle, uh, governance, uh, the days, limits, the notion of this in proportion to population, and the renewed interest in this uh, is out of step. So we've been engaged to aggressively pursue these changes. The notion that you'd reverse this rule now, when we're a month or two away from legislative rewrites, which would in fact hopefully take that action from your previous meeting, embrace it, build on it, uh, seems contrary, seems counterintuitive, and encourage you to just simply stick with your last motion and frankly engage with us so we can go to legislative session and do this sort of stakeholder process that's open. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Well, the only thing I've got to say is we've been asking as a commission for the last six months to see some financial information about Rito because we're trying to get a handle on how much money Rito takes in and how much they need to operate. Um, and so far, we've seen nothing. So... Mr. Chair, I, I, I can accept that. The only meeting that I've attended where their finances have been discussed, the Sims team and Turf Paradise, I believe in your presence, gave it a thorough scrubbing. We have offered to provide them audited financial statements. And I know Jay Wells has offered access to our accounting team. The lack of information on this is, is stifling, but it shouldn't lead to a reversal of the previous meeting's work even though we didn't understand what we were voting on. The Mr. Previous. Chairman, I accept that there is new information. That doesn't mean that the vote was the wrong vote. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, for clarification, may I just uh, interject? We did, our auditors, our fiscal year is uh, ending June 30th, and so because we're a county property and all that, we go through different kind of audit channels than the normal thing. Uh, two, there's only one auditor in Pima County that has the qualifications in order to uh, do the type of nonprofit audit that we are. Uh, we, we are a 501c3. We also have involved the farmer's market, so it's much more of a complicated thing. Uh, Greg Stiles was provided a letter by our, directly from our auditor, I believe last week, Greg, is that true? that they have asked for an extension until November 30th, and as of yesterday, I touched base with him, and that is. However, we have a history of clean audits, and the financials have been submitted, so it's not a question of whether financials are there for you to see, it's just simply are you seeing audited financials. And with our history of audits, we've never had any problem. We're 501c3, and, and uh, I think you'd be satisfied with what you would do. Chairman and members of the commission, I'm Buzz Alston. I'm an attorney for uh, Turf Paradise, and I'd like to speak to this issue if I may. Um, the, uh, the chairman, uh, you put your finger really on the, on the issue when you ask about the legislative activities. If they want, if Rita wants release or change from the statutes as they currently exist, their remedies out the state legislature. It's not here. You guys administer and regulate racing and their mutual region, but you don't legislate here. That's you follow your instructions from the legislature. Uh, and so that, that's where they need to go. Secondly, just as an introductory comment, uh, in order to claim the exemption, the exemption that they're looking for in, in the in statute, they, they, they have to convince you that they, an emergency exists which allows them to, to qualify for the exemption. And that requires two votes. One, the commission has to determine if there's an emergency. And assuming you decide there's an emergency, then you go on to the next question, is do you want to grant the exemption? Point being is if you don't find an emergency, that's the end of it. At this stage of the game, there are going to be places the legislature. And I will say that, as the lobbyist just told you, they've been, they've been in the presence of the legislature for some considerable period of time. And, uh, and either had been unsuccessful or the legislature wasn't wanting to do what they wanted to do. Uh, the uh, first thing I want to call to your attention is the, is a, the provision, yes, that's it, is a provision from the Arizona State Constitution. Uh, the Arizona State Constitution, which is a supreme law in Arizona, and uh, the legislature is bound by these provisions as are commissions and boards and so on. 
and it simply says that, that no, no local or special laws shall be enacted in any of the following cases. That is to say, and there's about 20 cases in the statute, but this the, in, the, in the Constitution, the number 13 is what, what applies here. And it says that they, there will be no laws made by the legislature or regulations by this commission. I'm adding that. Granting to any corporation, association, or individual any special or exclusive privileges, immunities, or franchises. So when they stand in front of you and say that they want an exemption from this thing, uh, that gives rise to a lot of, if you decide you want to do it, to a lot of things you, you need to consider. Um, and, I, and, and, I will, and, and I will come to that uh, momentarily. Uh, the, the, in order to get past the first hurdle of an emergency, they have to convince you that there is an emergency. An emergency is, is not a defined term in the statute, but in the, in the normal use and, and vernacular of emergency, uh, where you see it used, it's, it's, it's defined as a sudden, unanticipated consequence that needs a, an immediate remedy. That's kind of the, the generic definition of emergency. Well, there's nothing sudden about this, nor is there any immediate consequence that can be done to solve it. They've known for almost two years that the dome was going to come off, and when that happened, they were going to lose, plus or minus, $160,000 of revenue that they were getting in Pima County from the, from the, from the, 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 the uh, Tucson Greyhound Park down there. They've known this for two years. They've had a presence at the legislature. They had a presence the last time in the legislature. If they want to change the law, as they now urge you, that needs to be done to the legislature. The, uh, the second thing, and just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, getting, not here to give you a, 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 a legal primer on, on any of this stuff, but I simply say that the, I want to simply say that the law has been settled for years, for 30 plus years in Arizona relative to the commission's activities. And one is that the, com the commission, it, the, the commission's authority does not extend to getting into a negotiation or uh, uh, dealings with the parties as they deal with one another. You're, you're not deal makers. You're, you're, uh, your rule and regulation and statute enforcers, you don't make deals for, for, for the parties. And the second thing, based on the constitutional uh, uh, provision I just read to you, uh, you, you, you uh, equal protection of the law requires that you cannot make a regulation that, that benefits only Rio and nobody else. That's what that constitutional provision says. So here are your, here are your options. Uh, your uh, option number one, assuming you find an emergency, that gets you to the next, the next issue. If you decide it's an emergency, first thing you have to decide is uh, what do you want to do? There's three things you can do. One is, yeah, one is that you can grant you can you can grant the exemption, but because of the Constitution, you have to grant the the exemption to everybody, not just Reno, but everybody. Now, if if you don't do anything, if you don't act on it all, the result of your inaction will be that Turf Paradise will have. Uh, well, it should be 156 live races, but there is an agreement with the horsemen that they I think they do 131, whatever it is. But they, they, they will have 100, 150 plus or minus live race days and year round simulcasting. Rito will have 12 live race days with 20 simulcast days. And Arizona Downs, because they too would be entitled to the same uh, exemption, uh, it, they, if they, they would have 32 live race days and year round simulcasting simulcasting. Now, if on the other hand you decide that you, you're going to go ahead and grant the exemption, let me show you what happens. If you grant the exemption, under the law and the Constitution, you have to give it to all of them. Under the Equal Protection Law, everybody gets it. You do that, you have the following. Turf Paradise will have no live race day requirement and have sim uh, year and simulcasting. Rio will have no live day requirement. And 365 simulcast days. And Arizona Downs will have no live day requirements. And 365 simulcast days. Cat, uh, simulcast days. And what that does, it, 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 you can see that clearly, what that does is it destroys live racing in Arizona. And that's not what Terra Paradise wants, and I trust it's not what you want. And so that's the, 
given the law as it applies to these uh, these matters, given where their remedy lies, and that's on the other end of Washington Street, uh, we just uh, simply ask that you, uh, well, in, in one, one final word, and I'll sit down, but uh, Mr. Sims, when in discussions with the folks from the Hill, had offered to, uh, offered to conduct their their live racing activities for them down there, no cost to them, no risk to them, guarantee their purses and, and, and all that, so they could have that live racing. That was not acceptable to the folks at Rio, but I only tell you that because there could be non-legislative, non-commission solutions out there, but these folks have to work at that. They, they really have to work at that. And, uh, and, and, that, and, that they're, they're, and they ought to be working with, with the other racetracks in Arizona. They ought to be working with the legislature. <coughs> and, and, uh, but in closing, I would simply say that uh, the, the, only, the only two way that you can go on this is either get it to all or deny it to all. The, the, anything else would be in violation of the provisions of the Constitution. Any, if I, I'll be pleased to answer any questions you might have. I guess I don't understand that last slide that there'd be no live racing in Arizona. I mean, that just says they're not required to what? have live racing, but do you, like, that's a big leap to think that the racetracks are going to quit their live racing. I don't know. I, I, I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about what they're going to do, I'm talking about what they can do. Oh, I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, the, yeah. The, exem the exemption says in there that the, the, the exemption that they're seeking, and by the way, the exemption applies to, in subsection C, applies to turf, and subsection D, it, it, it applies to uh, Reno, and then E says it applies to both C and D. So I mean, they're both there. And it just simply means that uh, uh, in. in it, what they're what Reno's asking for is they're asking for the exemption to apply. If you say it, if you say it's way for them, it's way way for all. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm turf turf paradise. Turf paradise has uh, over over fifty years, sixty years, I guess, of, of, uh, of live racing out there. And it's a beautiful facility. It's a, the, the, they're, they're an institution in, in this area. The, not just for the for the horsemen and, and all, but the, the people that support racing that come out there to track and love it and see it. Uh, my my law firm, uh, Aver, Aver, uh, Kentucky Derby Day, we have 50 or 60 people from the law firm out there. Maybe you see them all dressed up, and we have. I mean, this is this is an institution. It's a, a live horse racing is an institution in Arizona, and in order for it to persist, you got to not yield that because. I mean, well, anyway, that's that's the story. It, I'm not saying they would, and I know Turf Paradise has no interest in getting that exemption. But they also understand the law is if if, if, if Rio gets it, they're entitled to it. Uh, Arizona Downs is entitled to it. Any, any other questions? Okay, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, may I address and rebut that? Is there anyone else who needs to speak? No, go ahead. Uh, Buzz, thank you for making my case, because if the fact that we are the only county in the state that is restricted to 140 live race days, that means that was special law. You're and well, I agree with you. You're well said, sir. Yeah. And it is special law, and that's what you're trying to remedy is the fact that this rep, uh, this special law has, has been on these books for so long prior to Rito becoming a commercial track. So Buzz is absolutely right. This is special law, and he's saying that you're going to create special law. No, you're going to remedy special law. And that's what this vote by, your, by the emergency did. He also said that emergency means that, oh my gosh, you know, suddenly someone pulls out in front of you in, a, in an intersection and you have a rut. Well, it's, if someone has had cancer for four years and they're running out of their health insurance and they're in a financial crisis, does that not constitute an emergency? It certainly would if it was my family. And this is your family. This is horse racing. And this is the time for you guys to understand that every time anyone besides Turf Paradise steps up and tries to make a step forward or participate or grow within the industry, there's a, there's a, a, a concerted effort, uh, a dog and pony show today, in my, in my opinion, to stop it. 
uh, we think that this is just so out of bounds. And, uh, you know, it, 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 pardon me if you see I'm a little hot under the collar, but one of the things that, that I always grew up with is that the teachers would say, if you can't play in the sandbox don't, and nicely, don't get in the sandbox. And I would ask, if, if the owners of Turf Paradise came in with the attitude that they have now as a new person into the, to the sandbox, would you let them play? And I think that it is an egregious uh, uh, situation that a, a nonprofit charity trying to save a national landmark uh, with cooperation and participation by the University of Arizona. We're just, just getting official status. I have an intern here. Zach, would you mind standing? And, and uh, Zach has been an intern now for, what, three years, two years? Yeah. And, I mean, we're making progress and we're doing something. And all they want to do is to suffocate us. Well, uh, you're the only folks in the room that can stop this. This is, I don't even have words for it. I just really don't have words for it. Uh, our existence uh, is at threat. Uh, we do, you can clearly, with the issues of us only being limited to, to what monies that we make from the kind donation from the dog track left over by this antiquated rule so that we are able to go out and generate revenue the same way that the other permittees uh, can or are allowed to. And now they're trying to stop our ability to do that. I don't think that anyone has ever heard me say we were just anxious to go open up parlors all over the state. That is not our intention. But what they're trying to do is to stop us from doing anything. They're trying to put us out of business. It is clear Mr. Sims has said it to my face. He's put his fingers in the chest of, our, of some of my employees and said, you know, this is what we're out to do, and you're not going to survive. Uh, so, you, do, you know, you, the decision is today uh, a little heightened based on the, the presentation just made. And uh, uh, we are going to try to solve this legislative because this is not the only fly in the ointment in the statutes that exist in, in, in uh, racing. And I think everybody would agree with that. I think there's even topics that need to be modified by the legislature that Turf Paradise and, and Rito and Arizona Downs are agreed to. But instead of coming together and sitting down with the legislature and trying to find ways for the industry to survive, the industry to grow, em embrace our state, generate more tax dollars for the Department of Gaming, etc., uh, if we get stymied every time there's a chance to, to stick our necks out and take some risk and make this thing happen, we're going to have to come to y'all and fight? And any, any decision you make, I mean, you guys are basically just becoming a, a boxing ring. But I, I, uh, I'm getting off topic. I apologize for the, for the emotions. Uh, gentlemen, please consider this with your heart and your brain. Make a proper decision. Thank you. Do the horsemen or Arizona Downs have any input on this? Good morning, Commissioners. Leroy Guestman, Arizona HBPA. You know, our goal for the horsemen is we want three racetracks. We feel we need three racetracks in this state to build back the industry of the breeding program that was at one time dropping 400, 450 folds a year in the state of Arizona which last year dropped down to 69 or 68 foals dropped. Since, from what I can see in looking in my records, since the time Yavapai struggle started and they disappeared, the full crop has been dropping, the handle has been dropping, the purses have been dropping, obviously the number of live race days have been dropping, this thing has just deteriorated. What I look at on the, at, at all the numbers from the time Yavapai left. I think you need to think about the Arizona racing program and what's good for the Arizona racing program, not just what's good for one racer. You got two big issues today, this one and the one coming up with the uh, signals. This uh, 
shutting down Arizona Downs from getting monarch signals and not even being able to show turf paradise signals. Something's got to be done about this. These three racetracks all got to survive and all have to contribute to the industry in Arizona to make it a successful industry. This industry is going to die if it's just one track continuing to operate. We're not going to be here. That's the way the horsemen feel. Aren't you afraid this opens a can of worms, though, by allowing Turf Paradise to have OTBs without a certain number of days they have to run? Well, the way I understand the law and what I do every month as the representative of the horsemen's group is I have to sign approval for those signals to go into those OTBs. And if there was no live racing at a racetrack, whether it's Rito, Arizona Downs, or Turf Paradise, I don't think the HBPA would sign that release to let those signals go. Any other questions? No. Director. Chairman Fisher's Tom author. Uh, Tom, he already signed the sign sheet. Yeah. He already did. Okay, good for me. She cleared at the end of the sheet. We, uh, Arizona Downs position is we, we don't really see any real harm in uh, allowing Rito a more expanded OTB uh, network. I don't think we're going to see them do that. They'll probably do it in conjunction with, with us or with turf. So um, you know, we, we don't, and, and, and perhaps uh, maybe a solution would be to go keep operating under this uh, emergency uh, act or, uh, until they can get some legislation in front of the legislature for this next year. And if it doesn't happen then, then maybe it needs to be reconsidered. But I, I, I do think that legislatively this needs to be dealt with and, and maybe we keep things as they are now until they can give them a chance, to, uh, all three of us to get together and get that together. That's all, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, um, as I said when I was up here before, I think the, the remedy lies either in negotiations between the parties and or legislation. The, the legislature will be bound by everybody in this room by the constitutional prohibition of, of passing what's called special laws. A special law uh, is, it prohibits one party of several from doing something or permits one party among several to do something the others can't do. So that, that's, that's, what the, that's where, the, where the solution lies in this. The, uh, the, the, the the commission's jurisdiction is is very carefully defined in, in both the statutes and in the the, 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 the laws of Arizona, and one of those uh, pos positions of the of the commission is not to get involved as as a mediator or a negotiator for the parties. One of the Arizona cases that came down uh, many years ago. Uh, the, the, that commission was trying to order the uh, the price of the then Arizona Downs, the predecessor Arizona Downs, to modify some agreements that they didn't into between them and the court said, you can't do that. You, this, you, you engage in a negotiation between the parties and their business deals. So, uh, and, uh, anyway, the, the, the remedy lies at, at the uh, at the uh, the legislature, turf paradise does not stand before you asking that you do something that would place in jeopardy live racing in Arizona. We don't want that. We want live racing in Arizona. We want to continue live racing in Arizona, and 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 we we urge you to not do anything that might place in jeopardy. Uh, live racing. Um, the, in, in terms of, of uh, Mr. Sims uh, putting his finger in uh, his chest or whatever it was he said he did, Mr. Sims offered to go down there and run that 
race, racing uh, meet for, for a vehicle at no cost to them. He would guarantee the prices to be the same as or better than the year before, but no less than the year before at no cost to them. And they weren't interested in that. I don't know why, but they weren't. And, and, and so my, my, my suggestion would be that, that, that uh, this gentleman that was just up here and Mr. Sims get back together and see if they can figure out some way to make this happen. If not, they need to go out to, they need to go out to the, the legislature and, and have the legislature look at it and change the laws. Uh, again, if you want to go forward from here, you've got to vote as, as to whether you, you see uh, an emergency as anticipated by the statute. If you vote yes, then you go to the substance of the, re of the uh, remedy they're seeking. And it's all over if you don't see a, see a mercy. I don't see a mercy. Thank you again. Well, Jay Wells said something that means something to me. He said, think about this with your brain and your heart. My heart wants everybody in racing to work together to improve racing. But my brain tells me that we actually overstepped our bounds by declaring an emergency uh, we're not legislators, and I think we're acting as legislators by declaring this an emergency. So you know, my wish is that you guys could get together and allow Rito to have an opportunity to make back the money that they're losing by losing what they're losing under the dome without us having to do something that may be illegal to make it happen. Can't you guys make it happen? I mean, that's the question. And uh, if you can't, I don't know what can be done. So go to the legislature and get it done there. Mr. Chairman, I just well, the obvious question is if uh, if you think that this is something that would be overstepping the legislature's control, why would that uh, part of the statute be in there? It's it's in there for the subjectivity of your judgment on a situation of what an emergency might be. Uh, uh, you know, if, if if it was a case they did not want you to have that power, they wouldn't have written it in the law. Uh, and it is in the statute, and I do think you have the, the opportunity to do this and, and, and judge this accordingly. We think you made the right decision the first time around, and uh, the, the efforts to negotiate Return Paradise to, to solve this have been ongoing and constant, uh, and, and no headway. We've been, you know, we have, we've certainly been, been out of, gone out of our way to extend the OTB signal, to not cancel it, the uh, uh, the signal into Pima County, letting it slide through the end of this expiration period, with several times being assured that there was going to, we're getting closer, we're getting closer to a resolution. Uh, we're not. We're not getting closer. The other side wants us out of business. It's that simple. They want to control the sandbox. <clears throat> Mr. Yoder. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, uh, Commissioners, and the Director. My name is Lloyd Yoder. I'm uh, HBPA uh, for the Horseman's Group in Arizona. Competition is a good thing. I'm in a comp very competitive business, and I find it uh, challenging and rewarding as well uh, when you have good, uh, fair competition. If it's not if it's not seeable now that since uh, Yavapai is closed, that we're we're losing business, we're losing the breeds, we're losing. A purse money. We're we're going out of business. We're going out of business fast. We can't wait two years to go to the legislature and make some changes to the rules. We're going to continue to go out of business if we can hold on long enough to get something done through the legislature. So be it. But if we can't, we need to do something to try to encourage and work together 
for the first one. These guys are in business to make money. We're in business to make money. But we're, it's also our sole business, and it may be for them as well. But the industry is the one that's suffering. And I don't know if, uh, I don't know all the legal ramifications. I'm, I'm a country boy, handshake, going about our business, just like this uh, first topic here on the uh, the rules for uh, that we made place for place, place time. That, that's all, that all came about because of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say to you is, I don't know uh, how this stuff works, but can it be referred to the Attorney General to make a ruling on this thing? I don't know if that's a, a feasible or not. Looks to me like somebody can make a ruling, either the legislature, the Attorney General, or you guys uh, step up and make, make a decision, right or wrong, and then we fix it as we go. But something needs to be done now. <laughs> So I have. Just for the record, the Attorney General doesn't make rulings, but we do give advice. I'm sorry? We don't make rulings, we do give advice. Well, that's what I'm asking. Uh, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for advice. Yeah. Then you have to go into executive session. Or if we, if we table this till the next meeting, could you do a memo? Certainly. To the commission? Certainly. Is there anything like an emergency in that case where it can be expedited? Because, I mean, daily we're going out of business. Daily. We can't sit here until the end of the meeting and figure out if we can do this or not. No. Well, we might want to do executive session. I was just trying to save these folks from having no We'll wait. We'll wait. You'll wait till next month? No, oh, we'll wait till we do an executive session. Okay. Oh. Thank you. I move we go into executive session. Can I make a comment before you do? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll sorry. withdraw that motion. I knew you signed it. Chairman of the Commission and Director of Greg's now. I want you just to know that since the day I made that offer, that I would have Turf Paradise run that meet and have no drop in person. I've never had a discussion, not a word, with Greg Stiles. So I'm not sure what he's referring to. I, think, I believe he's talking about where he's put a 30 day and a 15 day on stopping uh, racing uh, in uh, OTVs in the county. But as far as my offer, and then I retracted it because I had no interest but I would be interested in renewing it under certain circumstances. I couldn't really work with, with him and them. I, we, we'd run it. What we would do is we'd have our racing secretary be the racing secretary and, and book the races. We would go ahead and, and, do, the, and do these things uh, and have no cost to really go. Um, Purses would stay the same or higher, but I want to be sure we didn't have the interaction with folks that we weren't getting along because that's just about it's silly because we don't need that. We want we want real legal to run, and we do. We would make it run. I've looked at the numbers on the back of the napkin, and we can make real legal operate without a problem. So it, uh, there's never been a word. I don't know what Mr. Wells is talking about. I haven't had one discussion with him. Not even to tell me he wasn't in it. I only heard that through some people he wasn't in it. Um, one other comment, the, the legislature, I know Ms. I'm not sure what they're referring to, but the legislature comes back in January. So it's not eons or a long time away that they feel they can go back to the legislature. It starts back in First week of January. It is, as far as the horsemen are concerned, it's eons. No, I'm, not, I'm not debating that. I understand that. Look, I'm keeping third parity. I understand. I, I'm just telling you that there's two routes that I see. I go to the legislature, they come back and talk to me, but I've never had a discussion with them about it. any of the employees and I never put my finger in any it just didn't occur. I don't know where that came. Uh, I will sign the chief uh, chairman of the 
Planning Talk Commissioner and Mr. Cassis. Having said... Please identify yourself uh, on the record. Uh, yes, uh, Thank Vincent you. Francia, General Manager of Tour Paradise. Having sat in a similar position that you gentlemen do now as for 18 years as a mayor of a town right up the road here, I respectfully suggest and encourage you to please go into executive session, get counsel from your attorney that if you choose a, chose a these are the legal consequences, if you choose B, these are the consequences, so that when a discussion uh, begins with you gentlemen and you make a motion, you're absolutely crystal clear on, on what it is you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Vince. Yes, Before you close, and absent. Uh, Please identify present. yourself again on the record. Please identify yourself again Thank on the you record. Once again, Thank you. Public affairs on behalf of Reedo. Thank you. With respect to getting counsel, uh, the provisions, and I'm not able to access this. Um, no, in fact, it just came up. I think the constitutional language you've been shown is incomplete. What it says is that general laws are best, and special laws may only be used in special circumstances. There's a list in the Constitution, for example, on what you can't do. You can't grant a divorce legislatively. But what you've seen is about a third of this constitutional language. I hope you'll get this advice and plow this ground. The legislature and its extensions, these quasi-judicial bodies, are empowered to act in accordance with these laws. This has been vetted, and what you've seen here is relatively incomplete. So with that, I rest my case. Thanks. I move we go into executive session. Do I have a second? Can I? Okay, Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Heifel? Commissioner McClintock? Yes. I can't do anything until I verify that he's on. Can you text him? Oh, I have. Oh. Did that pass or not? I don't have a third. I'm waiting for Commissioner Heifel to respond. I'll be right back. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Oh. Okay. So we got our, our third. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Heifel. Okay. The time is 10.52, and we are recessing the first open session. This is the second open session of the 665th Arizona Racing Commission meeting held on November 8, 2018 at 1110 West Washington, Suite 250, Phoenix, Arizona, 85007. The time is... Okay, back on the session. Okay, the roll call is Commissioner Heipel. Here. Commissioner Lawless? Here. Commissioner McClintock? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. The time is 11.16 a.m. And again, please, since we are on the break, anybody that has turned their cell phone on, please turn it off or mute it. Again, take any conversations or calls out in the hallway. And I turn this back over to our chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a couple of questions for Jay Wells. Jay, would you come up? One, why do you think the legislature has had such a hard time correcting this if you guys have been working with the legislature for? Well, I think there's been a concerted effort, uh, especially from Turf Paradise lobbyists, to, to block anything that we did, and they clearly got weight. Uh, clearly, we weren't funded well. I mean, you know, since you've been dealing with us I and mean, we've been growing, uh, we did not have the finances. Uh, I think you, everybody knows that we started out investing a lot in the track, and, and we didn't think it was going to take six years, literally, to, to, to get these laws tur turned around to give us a fair opportunity. So we didn't have the wherewithal to literally play the game at the level that we have. Uh, we still don't. It is actually through a connection that uh, with Jim Click, who's a uh, prominent businessman in, in Pima County, who uh, heard us out, thought it was, again, an unfair situation, and, and he introduced us to the Dominion Public Affairs in, uh, last spring, and uh, we engaged them. And so we now have a serious effort to uh, uh, get that legislation passed. Uh, the, the, but, but if I may, the legislation that needs to be passed doesn't all deal with Rito. 
And the, the problem is, when you, when, if the, any legislature ever saw the horse industry come together, united, and ask for something, we would be way down the road. And I firmly believe that. Instead, there's all these, you know, moving block and, and just this, this uh, in my opinion, lunacy uh, to, to hold everybody from moving back. Uh, so that's the answer to the question. And, you know, I won't go off on preaching to you about my thoughts about you. Industry unity again. Yeah. You know, what kind of what ideas do you have to recoup the money? I mean, what what are your plans? Well, currently, uh, there you know the only conversation that we've had is with the dog track, uh, and, and I think that there was a, a, an issue that, about the Breeders' Cup, and you know the dome rule as we stand here today is still in effect, and uh, until the end of December, and so uh, every uh, month. Uh, since last spring, and the, the OTB contract expired uh, at the end of May, and it was on an annual basis. And after that, uh, Jerry sent up a, a uh, proposal and basically said, we want you to sign the agreement and go through the end of December, uh, so that then he just wrote the dome out, and we gave him permission. So we started giving 30-day uh, extensions, which we did through June and July. And then on assurances from Mr. Francia that, that we were making progress, et cetera, I did continue it through August, and then we didn't hear back. And there were some contentious meetings. Uh, there was a meeting, as a matter of fact, uh, regarding uh, having Turf Paradise come down. Vince and I had a lovely lunch. I had great respect for Vince. And uh, the big objection that Turf Paradise had to coming over and taking over Ito was that they didn't want to pay the debts we have on the books. Well, some of those debts are for are, are for losses, but most of those debts are for the infrastructure improvements that we made uh, uh, in order to get it up to be a commercial grade track and a track that, that we're very proud of its condition. So there, there, that was an offering, but he wanted to just come in and take it with a clean slate and go forward and leave us stuck, and that, that was an un, untenable position for us to, to even consider. Uh, so it wasn't that we rejected that idea. Uh, uh, so we did offer that, and it came to the Breeders' Cup, and uh, the dog track was, it, you know, at least called and said, you know, this is really, really important to us. And so there was a, uh, a conversation that the dog track would honor the 1.86% that we've been continuing to go just from their parlors. Well, clearly, if more parlors open up and, and we know that Turk Paradise is, is making plans, uh, we, we embrace Arizona Downs coming down. They've dealt with us very fairly, very forthright, uh, they are a great addition to the state's industry, and uh, they're suffering from some of the same blowback that, that Rito suffers from. So we did get that agreement, but that is only going to mean that as more par parlors open up, if we're not uh, participating in those new parlors, it's not going to be new fans stocking those new, in, in some cases, it's going to be better improved parlors, better locations, better amenities, etc. Uh, we'll see that shrink. So uh, it is shrinking already due to the fact that so many parlors have closed in, in Pima County. Um, you know, as an aside, we're not going to stand still and, uh, and not make some sort of blowback in Pima County at the Board of Supervisors meeting or the City Council. But, you know, is that our best way to spend our time? We would much rather be advocating horse racing. And uh, so that, to answer your question, that's about all we have. Um, were we given this, this opportunity to uh, have our own OTP policy and, and eliminate the uh, restriction of 140 days, the main thing that that meant to us immediately was that we now could go to the county and say, hey, you know, we, we do need to, to look and start negotiating uh, in order to have a simulcast center at Rito uh, Park. This is, you couldn't beat it at a better location. I mean, it is in the heart of the population. So there are, some, there are some things, but we have no plans to actually go out and open up a bunch of parlors. I will say that we have had negotiations with people that do it kind of a turnkey operation, and they farm it out. The best conversations that we've had have dealt with both the dog track and the uh, Arizona Downs in order to work together to open up parlors. Uh, if I may add, uh, as an aside, you know, the best thing that would happen is that these purse monies that were earned by everybody's parlors were then the HBPA stood up and said, hey, this is the money, it's our, it's our purse money. We would like to see it allocated here, and I'd, I'd like to see it allocated there. That would solve Rito's problems. We have one great advantage over our other, the other two permittees in the, in, the, in the state. 
We had 50,000 people out there over 12 days, and they're buying beer, and they're, you know, they're doing small wagering. But we don't have the cost of the bigger permittees or, or wagering. So our threshold is real low. And that is what's so disconcerting and disappointing uh, in, this, in this fight and this argument. We, a million dollars would cure our ills. And we're talking about a, a handle of 250-something million dollars, and so the takeout's got to be, you know, uh, in serious money, and we're probably talking about a 2% difference in the overall uh, uh, takeout in the state. Uh, that's not the point. In my opinion, this, is, this issue is, again, the control of the sandbox, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to go down that road again because I've already beat me up. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing it myself. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, what's the latest financials you have, and would you provide them to us? Absolutely. And uh, the auditor, I spoke to him yesterday. Uh, you know, it's 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 a. There's only one auditor in, the, in Pima County that has his license to do a nonprofit audit, and so he's in a big accounting firm, RNA. Uh, they did send a letter. Uh, one of our issues, as I said earlier, is that we closed at the end of June, so our fiscal year is then compacted. We have to get an audit out based on June 30th, and, and by statute, is, is, is technically due by the end of October. So we did ask for that little bit of extension, and we're aware uh, that there's that, again, a conflict that, that needs to happen. Maybe one of the things in legislation should be that the audits do so many months after completion of your, your fiscal year or calendar year. But but again, uh, we've got our own set of problems to work on. Uh, we just need a chance to, to, to be able to, to make our own money, generate our own money. Uh, we're out to share. We're not out to come in and take over every parlor in Pima County and take all the money. Uh, there's a certain point where, you know, I've got to spend some time doing my regular business. <laughs> yeah. And not just all nonprofit. But anyway, that's where we are. What about last year's audited financials? Can you get those to us? They, 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 well, they're turned in. They've been in for a oh, while. Okay, we yes. got those great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, now we did. We we were seriously handicapped with with finances, and I think I've made that clear and been transparent about that. Uh, we had a, a quarter million dollar gift that we did not receive. That was pledged that we did not receive. So that set us back uh, from the 2017 season. But we did have a profitable, uh, in our opinion, and we thought it was great. Uh, we had a hundred twenty thousand uh, dollar. Uh, Net profit, but uh, excuse me, we had $190,000 net profit, but 120 of it was overpayment. So it's, it's kind of odd the way the, the PL works, but uh, in essence, the track added money or any of that overpayment contribution from bar proceeds, etc., go in as revenue and then fall over on a, as a current asset. As a, uh, a, a current asset. So that's shown as a receivable, and it's sort of odd, but that's what the state statute uh, dictates. Huh? Anything else? That's it. Uh, good morning, Mr. Commissioner, uh, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Kelsey Lundy with Compass Strategies, and I represent Turf Paradise down at the state capitol. I just want to make one clarification because it keeps being referenced that Riedo has attempted to make some changes down at the legislature for the last couple of years in anticipation of the dome coming off. Um, and what I want to clarify is that as kind of the lead lobbyist for Turf Paradise down at the state capitol, I'm obviously very um, involved in any legislation dealing with the racing industry down there and did have legislation that we worked on with the horsemen last session in 2018. And I will tell you that I was very surprised when this entire issue came up last month because I have not been approached by Riedo or any of their representatives for the last two years asking or expressing concerns about the expiration of the dome. And so I just want to make clear, I'm not sure if other conversations have gone on with legislators down at the Capitol that we have not been aware of, but there was active legislation last year and there would have been an opportunity for this conversation to come up with legislators and with stakeholders. And there was a stakeholder meeting that took place that Riedo did participate in, and this specific issue was not raised at that meeting. And so to, to make it sound like there's been a large discussion down at the legislature in either the 2017 session or the 2018 session in regards to this issue is, is not accurate, um, or at least I was not a participant, nor was Turf in any of those conversations. And that I just wanted to make that clarification. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, to address one issue, I would be happy, and I said it before, to support that the legislature for Rialito to be a year-round OTB at their facility. I would be supportive of that, and I would have our lobbyists be supportive of that issue, uh, it, it, and I think it's a good solution. I guess my name is Pim um, I have to uh, say that I don't quite disagree with the young lady here on the comments about Rito's efforts. Uh, I don't remember the exact language, but two years ago, the bill that we had down there to get readers' awards into the budget and a couple other minor things, they were trying to add on language. I don't know exactly what they were trying to add on, but we uh, worked to keep it off so we wouldn't clutter up the bill and we would get the breeders fund through. And last year, um, Rito did want to make uh, an amendment onto our bill and as well as uh, another individual tried to get some uh, language amended onto the bill, Steve Nolan. Uh, and we went to both parties on the advice of Representative Cook and asked them not to file their amendments and not to clutter up the bill because we had the bill, in his words, on the one yard line, we were ready to go across the goal line and he didn't want any other language or amendments on the bill. So they did try last year, I do know that. Thank you. Listening to Leroy and Roy and Jay, you know, I think there's a potential for an emergency. I really do, either financial or industry survival emergency. Um, I'd like to review on the financial emergency side the financials starting with last year and if during this month we get this year's get them in immediately Jay yes. and toward that end I moved that we don't have a meeting scheduled in December the next meeting is January but I don't want it to go that long so I would um, move to table this until a special meeting on December 13th so that I can do my due diligence on the emergency issues and the commission can. So that's my motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Heipel. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Heipel? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Okay, so this matter has been tabled until a special meeting of the Arizona Racing Commission to be held on December 13th, 2018 at 10 a.m. in this room, this building. Okay, item two, <clears throat> approval of the 2019 Arizona Racing Commission meeting dates. Those dates are January 10th, February 14th, March 14th, April 11th, May 9th, June 13th, July 11th, August 8th, September 12th, October 10th, November 14th, and currently there's no December meeting scheduled for 2019. And on the record, Commissioner Heifel did contact me asking if we might be able to move the April 11th meeting to another date, and I checked with our landlord. The conference room is not available the following week. Um, now, I understand that 
you guys sometimes have things scheduled. All I can say is we need to have a quorum. That that's the bottom line. So. Um. Okay. What move we approve? So well, my my oh, my, I guess my concern would be if we don't have another uh, commissioner appointed or Rory or someone is out, we're not going to have a quorum. Well, that so would be on the April 11th. Any other dates we could look at to move that meeting? I can check back with the landlord on that. Again, I schedule this around dark days out at the track so that the industry participants may come to the meetings. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm out of the country. I've had this scheduled for a long time. So. I'll, I'll approve it subject to uh, the commission approving it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what we turns out we if it turns out if we don't have a quorum, I don't have my calendar, but if we don't have a quorum, we just cancel that month's meeting. So. Okay, so I have a motion to approve and a second. And Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Heupel? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. Okay. Uh, item three. Turf Paradise off-track betting facilities, Farley's Pub, LLC, 230 North Broad Street, Globe, Arizona. Great. Yes, last month, uh, Turf Paradise turned in this application. We reviewed it. It has um, the approval of local um, administration over there, and uh, we recommend approval. So moved. Second. Okay, Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Heipel? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Motion carries. Farley's Pub LLC has been approved as a Turf Paradise OTB. Item B, Legends Sports Club, 8378 West Thunderbird, Peoria. Yes, previously Turf Paradise turned in this application in. We have done the research. Ownership is licensed. They have the proper um, municipal authority. Uh, approval, and we also recommend approval. So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. McClintock, or excuse me, Chair McClintock, beat on that second. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Heipel? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Legend Sports Club is an official OTB for Turf Paradise. Item 4, Santa Cruz County Fair and Rodeo Association request to correct its 2019 race dates approval of 2020 race dates. Uh, the new dates are 2019, April 27, 28, May 4th and 5th, and 2020, April 25th and 26th, and May 2nd and 3rd. And they currently have an agreement, um, and we recommend approval for this as well. Just to clean up item here. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Heipel? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. Okay, item C, information report. Interaction of the three Arizona permittees presentation by permittees regarding transmission of signals between racetracks. Dave Author for uh, Arizona Downs. Does anybody have parking issues right now? <laughs> I think we're good for a little while. Um, I tried to uh, uh, compartmentalize two issues that we're uh, dealing with with respect to Arizona Downs and obtaining simulcasting and teletracking signals for uh, for our track and for the OTBs that we have opened so far. And the two issues that we have for you, and uh, the first is the turf paradise signal, which we still don't have at our track or at our OTBs. And the second issue deals with uh, the monarch signal, which is we still do not have at our OTBs, but we do have it up at the track. 
and I and I laid out in these little black notebooks a summary of, uh, of what the, the arguments are that they put in a few exhibits, if you don't mind uh, following along. The first issue is the turf paradise signal, and, it, and it's really, uh, I believe what the issue is, is we need some guidance. It could be from Madam Attorney General, and it may be from uh, the uh, department as to what the law allows Turf Paradise to do with respect to sending their signal in state to Arizona Dallas. And what I've done is I've, I've presented a, a small, a short memorandum and I attached a couple of definitions of uh, what we think are the relevant issues. And first of all, uh, we've, we've, we've gone back and forth with uh, Dave Johnson and, uh, and Vince with respect to just getting the signal to us. And it's been Dave's position uh, that the law requires him, or the law essentially forbids him from sending the signal to Arizona Downs OTVs in the traditional simulcasting way and that is in case anybody doesn't know what that is if if for example we want the Keeneland signal Keeneland will will sign a contract with Keeneland to say we will pay four percent of the handle to you for you to send the signal to us and then when we get our bets in we uh, eight percent of the bets typically go back to the betters and there's a 20 percent approximately take out that the OTBs that we get to keep. And you subtract from that the signal cost, and let's say it's 5% to Keeneland, so now there's 15% left for us to distribute. And with our contract with the horseman, half of it goes to the horseman, and half of it goes to us. So approximately, and it depends, numbers, 7.5% uh, goes in purse money for the horseman, 7.5% we retain. The, uh, and we proposed uh, that to Turf Paradise, and Turf Paradise said, no, we can't do that because the statutes don't allow it. And uh, they in, instead said that they would pay us to take their signal approximately 5.5% of the handle. So instead of us getting and keeping about 15% of the handle, they're offering us to keep 5% of the handle and then splitting that with the horsemen so the horsemen, instead of giving seven, getting seven or seven and a half percent of the handle, are getting two percent, or maybe even less, depending upon the taxes. Uh, we think that's unfair to us, and, and more particularly, we scoured the statutes looking for any rule, regulation, et cetera, that requires Turf Paradise to treat us in this fashion differently from Keeneland, Churchill Downs, everyone else in the world where we get signals. And um, we did recognize that uh, we had this controversy, and as I understand, uh, Vince and uh, Director Casillas and maybe Greg Stiles and our GM and McGovern sat down to try to work it out one day after, your, uh, after the safety meeting. And as I understood, the department said, you can sign a contract just the way Arizona Downs wants, as long as you call it a teletracking contract. Because in the statutes and the regulations, they differentiate by name, but not by quality or anything else. A simulcast is interstate. Teletracking is intrastate. Uh, but so far as I can tell in reading the rules and the statutes, it's the same thing. So, so what we are asking and, and what we would like is, is uh, somebody to tell Turf Paradise and us what they can and cannot do. Because we're, they're asking us to prove a negative, prove that there's something that's not in there, and we can't find anything. So what we think is best for the horsemen, and I imagine they, if they would agree with that, is to have a traditional simulcast agreement which we'll call teletracking because the rules talk about teletracking intrastate. A traditional one where we'll pay them whatever the market rate, whatever Turf Paradise sells their signal to Chicago or, or Kansas City or anywhere else, it's probably 3 or 4%, I don't know what it is. Uh, we'll pay that, and then we'll, and then we'll save the 7% for the horsemen. Then we will have the first money as opposed to Turf Paradise 
retaining all of the purse money, uh, which is not the traditional way. So um, I, I hope we don't have to go into executive session, but maybe we do and have uh, uh, Ms. Ray tell us what she thinks, and we'll abide by whatever whatever you say. If you say you can't do it that way, well, we'll do it the way that they proposed. But I can't find it. And we'd like to do it the traditional way because it allows us to have purse money to build our own track. And that's what I have to say on that topic. Do you want to split the topics up or do you want me to keep going on tomorrow? Let's split them up. Do you get okay. your, uh, well, it's kind of both ways, do you, or both topics. Do you get the turf paradise signal at your track through Monarch? I don't know. We, we haven't gotten it yet. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how we'll get it. I thought Turf Paradise sold their signal through Monarch. So you should. I, I don't know how we'll get it. Uh, you should have it now. No, we don't have it. We don't. We don't have it at. Uh, we don't have it at the, the track. We can't get it. The track. We have the Monarch signal at. We have the Monarch signal at the track, but we do not have the Turf Paradise signal. And I, I, actually, I don't know why we don't. Help us out. For record, Dave Johnson, I am the vice president. The I don't need to. Okay, no. All right. um, so, what uh, Dave Arthur was talking about the difference between simulcast and teletracking. He can't get the signal through Monarch because that would be a standard simulcast agreement that is sending the signal across state lines because Turf Paradise is an in state track. It has to be done through a teletrack agreement, so it has to be between it has to be done between the two racetracks, Turf Paradise and Arizona Downs. So now we have offered a, a, a teletrack agreement to Arizona Downs. That offer has been on the table for several weeks. Um, the percentages are traditionally what a teletrack agreement would be, and we are just asking for a reciprocal agreement from them when they would. So what we're asking for now uh, to pay them to be the OTB is exactly what we would expect to get from them when they run by and they would pay us to be their OTB. Is it market with what other people pay you? It is not market in the traditional simulcast terms, but it is definitely market in the traditional teletrack terms. And you know, we are the racetrack that is running live. We are the ones who are trying to support live racing as we run a live race meet. And therefore, we traditionally, all racetracks in Arizona, when we have an agreement like this, have, have offered this, where you pay the other permittee a, a, a teletrack fee to be the, the additional entry facility. But we are not, it, it, what we are offering is the same thing we are expecting. Where do these rules come from? Uh, they are R19, I, I think 414. So it's, um, uh, it's these are rules that, yeah, these are the, it, they're also in the statutes and also in the rules governing uh, regulated Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. There's no such thing as a traditional teletrack wagering agreement. There, are, there aren't any. I mean, I, I don't know what that even means. There's nothing in the statute that says this is a traditional teletrack wagering agreement. Uh, there wasn't even there was one OTP system years ago, and we finally have two. And so to say that this is the way we've always done it has never impressed me, uh, you know, as a reason for anything. Uh, in, in my life or in the horse racing industry. It, it is, uh, there isn't anything in the statutes or the regulations that requires them to treat us differently than they would treat any other of their OT, any of the other signals that are coming in. The difference is, Turf Paradise gets to keep the money. And I mean, and if you just, and I, I hate to throw a Jay Wells at you, but uh, it, it's, it's just, it's, that's the difference. The difference is turf gets the money. 
Now they're saying, oh, oh, well, we'll do the same for you. Well, they'll do the same for us in, in May when it's too late for us to accumulate any, uh, any purse money. Or they'll say that's the way we've always done it because they've crammed it down Riedel's throat. Or maybe they did it some other way. But, but all, all I'm saying is I, I've read the statutes, I've read the definitions, I've read it all through. And they can either say we don't want to give you that signal because we want to make more money. And they, I guess they can do that. But what they can't say is that it's required for them to do that under the statutes because that's not true. <laughs> And, uh, and to the extent there's a, a, a legal analysis that needs to be made, I thought it was already made at the meeting uh, that, that Vince attended and uh, Greg, and, and maybe you all can give us a, a summary of what you found out last time, but we're, we're stunned that, that we're still having this argument, but I thought it was all cleared up. You don't have to do it any differently, Turf. You can do it just the way it's always been done with every other, uh, and then it allows us to accumulate purse money for Arizona dance. How, how many contracts do you have with other signal providers? We've had uh, probably 40 or 50 different contracts for uh, at the track, uh, some of which, uh, you know, there's been Meets that started for a month and then then stopped, and meets that started and stopped. So I would say about forty or so. And, and you're saying they all are <coughs> kind of a market fee of twenty uh, percent versus whatever the fee is. So you net somewhere thirteen, fourteen, fifteen percent. Exactly. Some are a little bit higher because I think some of the Monarch tracks charge eight or nine percent so then you take the eight or nine percent from 20 then you divide the 11 but none of them and i've never seen one is where the track pays us to take their signal and we only end up with five or five and a quarter percent and uh, the explanation from these folks is that it's because it's the difference between in-state and out-of-state but like i said there's no there's no difference in kind with respect to how you should treat in-state or out-of-state uh, facilities, in my opinion. It's, but, so this has just been a negotiation between you and her? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure we can get in the middle of a... <laughs> well, I think, I, I think what the... I think both turf and... Uh, and uh, Arizona Downs would appreciate would be some clarification of what uh, the, the AG or the department believes is the uh, is the law on the subject. I mean, we're we're, we're hamstrung when uh, you, you know when one side says I can't do it because of the law, and we say we can't find the law that you're talking about. But if uh, you know, I'd hate to see you punt on this one, but. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Okay. Jeannie, have you been able to read up where you prepared to discuss this at all? I can discuss it, yes. Not not in open session. Yeah, but no, no, I don't need an open session. Have you referred to this? I have some knowledge of this, yes. Well, okay. Could you maybe give us an email before the next meeting? Because this is just an information report. It's not Correct. anything we're going to take any action today on. So yeah. I don't think we need an executive session. That's a good assessment. I agree. Uh, may, I, may I say, excuse me. Uh, Please it, don't adjust the microphone. Thank somehow you. Somehow this went from an action item to an information session, and that surprised us. But I, I don't know why that happens or how things get moved from high priority to apparently low priority, but it, it, I can't think of a higher priority than this would be because we're starving uh, <laughs> without having the uh, appropriate OTP, but that's uh, Again, this is Dave Johnson on Return of Paradise. Um, I, I just want to make sure everybody does understand when we're talking about teletrack agreements, and when I'm saying traditional teletrack agreements, we have teletrack agreements with 
Tucson Greyhound Park with Apache Greyhound Park with Maxis. We had teletrack agreements for years and years and years with the old Yavapai Downs. Okay, these, this contract matches those agreements, the way those agreements were always structured. And so when I say this is a traditional uh, teletrack agreement, it is what has always been offered for ever since I've been in the industry. And it, again, it's, uh, I'm, we're not asking for anything more than what uh, we would expect from the other pie downs. And it, right now, the lion's share would go to Turk Paradise. We are running the libraries meet when the other pie downs runs. Uh, I'm sorry, Arizona Downs runs. They will get the lion's share. But that doesn't mean that they still shouldn't be putting this money to purses. This money should still be going to purses. So they will be collecting, they, not as much right now, but they will be collecting a certain percentage, and they should be splitting 50-50 with the horsemen, just as we do when we have uh, when we have an agreement. We're going to take that money, and we're going to split it 50-50 with the horsemen. It'll be the smaller share, but we will still do that. We always have. And that's the way all these, these, these agreements have always been structured. So that's when I get back into the traditional agreement. That's what I'm referring to. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Director, uh, just I'll be please, brief, I, I hope. please identify yourself again on the record. Also, Don't touch my mic. Uh, I, uh, in listening to the to the remarks, uh, I, I believe and I know this is just informational, but I believe that this is something that again doesn't fall under the responsibilities or the concerns of the of the Basin Commission. I, in a letter I sent you, I cited in 1981, there's a Supreme Court case where just the same thing happened. Uh, you, as I said, as I said before, you, you are you are here to regulate and serve racing, permits of uh, wagering, and the public of Arizona in the best interest according to your challenge. But you're not you're not charged with getting in the middle of negotiations between two parties. Uh, and they, they have to work it out themselves. And so what I would like to do, because I haven't even had a chance to read uh, the, the, the book you has been provided, but I'd like to take a look at it and perhaps uh, provide your counsel with a, with a brief as to my, my comments and my observations about it. But it's, it's my feeling based on what I understood uh, uh, Mr. Arthur to be saying, that if this comes under the under the project of, of the, the, the permittees dealing together and, and not your concerns with the recent Thank you. Lee Murray Gutsman, Arizona SPTA. I guess, it, from what I'm understanding and trying to negotiate this deal for the last six weeks, it's it's not about the percentages. It's just about the way it's structured. One side has an opinion it should be structured one way. The other side has an opinion it should be structured the other way. I think what they're asking you today to do is not negotiate the contract for them. They're asking you which way should it be done. They're just asking for clarification on which way it should be done. Tabling this till next month. Every day that goes by that Turf Paradise races out there, both purse accounts are suffering. And both purse accounts are on life support system, as is Rito's purse account on life support system. Uh, if there's any direction you can give these guys today, please do so, so we can get this resolved and Saturday start putting money and more money in both purse accounts. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think the items table be right. <clears throat> I think I agree with Dave. I thought the first uh, agenda that came out had a, had a, as an action item, and I was surprised when the agenda uh, I saw it yesterday in preparation that it had been moved to a non-action item. So I think it's imperative that. I will address that, Tom. Okay. That was my decision to put it on the agenda as discussion only. Okay. Because this was the first presentation from uh, Mr. Author's group uh, to present these uh, concerns. And I wanted to give you guys ample time to take it in and make a decision. So Fair enough. My fault. Well, I don't think it's anybody's fault, but I, 
agree that it's urgent that it be on a special meeting next month. We can't, I don't think we can legally take any action, can we? No. Yeah. You know, that may, that may be true, uh, Dave Author. Uh, that may be true that you may not be able to leave, but if, if we just had a sense of the of the commission, if, if we just had a, an idea, I mean, we tried the, the, the easy way was that was to convene a meeting where uh, where Vince was there, and I, I wasn't there, I was I didn't know about it. I think Greg was there, I think Director Casillas was there, I think Leroy was there, and, and that was the plan. We're all gonna sit down, we're gonna figure it out, and then it was, uh, and, and, and we presented, as I understand, the information about there's no statute that prevents it. And then the, I think the director said, hey, we don't care what you call it. You can do it. And I'm maybe speaking out of turn about what happened. But, but then, it, and then it never happens. You know, you know nothing ever happens. And, and, then, and then we don't know what to do. How can we get this to the finish line? Uh, by maybe the commission would say, hey, hey, you guys, this is what we think is the way the, the statute reads. Or maybe the AG says that. I, I don't know what to do anymore. We're, we, we just can't get anywhere uh, this way unless we capitulate. So, so, so it, it's, it's always the same. You just have to give up and quit and do it the way Turf Paradise does it, or, or you're, we're just gonna we're just gonna push it off and push it off. So. Uh, that was our goal, was to find out what people in the know <clears throat> think the rule is. And, and if, if we can't get it, we can't get it. Well, we're not in a position today to even know what the rule is. But I, 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 I hate this executive session routine just because it always takes time, but to the extent Ma'am, that you you know what the answer is, we're all ears. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm not the oracle. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know how else to do. It. Honestly, we, we we cannot get anything accomplished without some some in, information. Are we? Can we go in executive? I would session? say that it's inappropriate for today's meeting to go into executive session. I think on a non-action item. Right. I, uh, I don't think it's appropriate. It, it's inappropriate or appropriate? It is not appropriate. Uh, not appropriate. Darn it. Today. All right. You're giving it your best shot, Dave. All right. Well, sympathetic. Okay. Uh, second issue that we raised was a, was a proposed. Okay. I'm sorry. So are you looking to have the first issue then put on a special agenda? If so, I need a motion to table it, to put it on that agenda, and then a roll call well, on that. We're not that. tabling it because it was never on. I, okay, I'll, then direct me to, okay. I move that we put information report item number one, interaction of the three Arizona permittees on our special December meeting. Thank you. So, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Heupel? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Okay, this item will be put on the special agenda as an action item. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the other half was our proposed uh, regulation with regard to... Chairman, may I speak on the issue? Sure. Dave's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent Francis, Turf Paradise Race Course. Since my name has come up and the meeting has come up, yes, I was present at a meeting uh, following the horse fatality meeting with uh, Mr. Casillas and Ann McGovern of, uh, uh, of uh, Arizona Downs and Grave Style. And the director made it very clear that this matter between, yeah, between Arizona Downs and Turf Paradise is a teletrack matter and for the obvious reasons. It, it, it is the sending of signals of tracks within the same state as compared to a simulcast signals coming in out of state. Furthermore, as Mr. Johnson said, every teletrack agreement that we have had in the states over the years follows this uh, same formula. This is really a, 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 a contract negotiation, private though it may be, between uh, Arizona Downs and Turf Paradise. And it's not, and I, I say this with respect, it's not really the purview of the commission to get involved in a contract negotiation. Um, as long as I've been involved in those type of things, contracts, negotiations, it's a back and forth issue. But again, following uh, Mr. Casillas' 
um, detailing of what this is, which I already know it is a talent act. The other thing Mr. Casillas wanted to make sure of whatever the two parties negotiate out, which is the responsibility of the parties, is that the, uh, the RWA and the tax be made very clear in the contract who is going to pay that to the department. To the division. Vince, in your mind, is, are the negotiations over with what, is it a take it or leave it? Or? No, no, okay. one. Mr. Sims has not said that. I have not said that. Uh, Arizona Downs has not said that to us. No, no one has said well, take they, it or leave it. Can you make plans to sit down and negotiate both parties in good faith? Yeah, we'd love to see you guys get the signal out to them now. So, Split the baby, come up with some kind of agreement. I wouldn't quite put it that way, Mr. Chairman, but uh, no one has any objection. I, I don't speak for, uh, for hours on the downs, but I'm sure they don't object. Mr. Simpson does not object for us to, to sit down. But again, just so we're clear, we're treating this as a teletrack because that's what it is. It's the sending of a televised signal between two tracks within the same state. It's not simulcasting. But isn't it, in essence, the same thing? I mean, what's the difference between simulcasting other than where the signal's going or coming from? Where, where they share similarities, they are both televised sim, uh, signals. Where they differ is one is coming in from one state into another state, which right. is the simulcast, whereas there are provisions for that which is called teletracking, which is the sending of a televised signal that which they have in common but between tracks in the same state. Right, I understand the definitional difference. I'm just the practical difference, it seems identical to me. Simulcasting and teletracking. Uh, it, it does, but there, there are distinctions. They share similarities and there are distinctions. Okay. All I'm saying. If I could just add real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for allowing me. Thank you. <laughs> please identify yourself again. You're getting kicked in. Please, You're getting kicked please off, identify yourself on the record. <laughs> State your name on the record, please. David Johnson, uh, Turk Curtis. Um, what you're saying is, in essence, yes. Uh, what, uh, what it's referred to as is, is an electronically televised race. But again, because, and Vince is absolutely correct, because it is between tracks in the same state, it is a teletrack agreement rather than a simulcast agreement. Right. I, so, I, I understand the definitional yeah. distinction. But it's practically yeah. electronically televised. Yeah, I see. And there's an Arizona statute that addresses this situation. Yes, sir. That Dave can't find. Right. <laughs> addresses it in what way? It says, that, it says that a simulcast race can only be sent across state lines. A teletrack, electronically televised race, can't be sent between permittees as oh, I'm looking, at, this, I'm looking at the statute in Dave's summary, but I'm talking about the finances of it. Oh, it why, is, why are they treated differently on a simulcast basis than a teletrack basis? Isn't it just pure negotiation between the parties? It is pure negotiation, but we have always looked at it because it is, a, it is an additional wagering facility for the location, and the commission fee is literally to pay for the, the facility. And for over 20 years, this is the way we've always done it. And if I may add, just so we are clear here, the agreement we have offered and asking in a, when, when Arizona Downs runs, it would be at least we asked for a reciprocal agreement. By all calculations, Arizona Downs stands to make considerably more money on this. So I, I, I would hope that uh, it's not, we're not looking at it like we're trying to take advantage of anybody. Financially, we calculate that Arizona Downs will be considerably much more money. On your proposed percentage? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and Arizona Downs doesn't feel that way. Feel? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's math. You know, I can't change math. And, uh, and, and can you even imagine getting an offer from Turf Paradise that was good for us and bad for them? It's never going to happen. No. Me... So, so it, it, is, it is untrue. It is, it is, 
you know, today, if we had four or five OTBs and we started running, there's a, there's a slight chance that because we could send our signal to all of the OTBs at Surf Paradise that they may make, that we might make a little bit more money. But that's not the situation. We're going to continue to open OTBs, and we're going to continue to grow, and we need the funds right now. And, and it's there's in the way they've always done it. There isn't any other way they've always done it. We've only, we only had one OTB system all this time. I don't know how they have contracts between Yavapai and Turf Paradise that that runs one way or the other because it was a combined system. But you know we've. Uh, it's not in there. It's not in the statutes. Uh, the teletracking, as Tom Wallace has indicated, it's the same thing as simulcast, and we ought to be treated the same way. And that's been our plea. I believe that was the purpose of the meeting, which was chaired by the, uh, the, the department, and, and we, we just, or the division, we just can't seem to get there. And, and if it's your believe that you can't decree what we do as two separate companies, then you know, I guess that's the way it is at the next meeting. But uh, we just wanted to find out, essentially, if they were right and we were missing something. Every time I talked to, to the other side, Turf, they say, oh, well, you're new in this business. You're just a rookie. You haven't been around long enough. And let me tell you how to do it. I get patted on the back. Well, I'm tired of hearing that. I mean, if it's a rule, it's a rule. If it's not, it's not, and uh, and we'll abide by it. I, but, Dave, I think everybody's kind of conceded that it's not a rule in the statute. It's a pure negotiation. Yeah. Between two parties, and uh, I think it's been correctly pointed out. We can't probably okay. get involved, but I want to see what that that says. I would disagree with Buzz's characterization of the case law, but regardless. We should convene again. We should have the horsemen I, there. I and we agree. should work the our thing out. As long as we meeting. all know that that's the, as long as we all know that that's the playing field. There's no, there's no limitation on what they can do. There's no statutory no. prohibition. That's what we thought. And I think turf. I think turf feels that way. That there's no <clears throat> statutory provision that prohibits you. Go ahead, Jerry. Jerry <laughs> says. Just to clear up a couple of those things on how they would make more money, it's 100% accurate that they want it to happen. Now, let me explain what I mean. If we bet on them, if they're running their meet come May, when they are running their meet, um, or June, uh, the last day of May, and, and, the, the op and, and it's reversed, with 58 OTBs of ours, and the track betting on their product, they're going to make a whole lot more because we have the history of the numbers when this existed with the previous uh, high downs. Then their four OTBs, and let's say they expand it and they have eight or ten, whatever they expand it between now and then, by June, I mean, not that many months to get this, they won't bet nearly as much on us because they only got those locations and they're tracked there. I don't want to take away from them, but they're not going to bet the same as 58 OTBs betting and the track betting on their product. It's, it, it's way outweighed they're going to make more money. And I, uh, I, I, so that's just the fact. Well, maybe you, in your meeting, you and the horsemen can convince Dave teach him some math. I he's, he's not convinced. I spoke to him yesterday. Or give okay. him some money in advance. Yeah, I was going to say, can you advance some of it? It's called yeah. negotiations. Uh, it, it's true. And, and the commission, in all due respect, cannot be involved in, in, in private negotiations. We're not. We're, we're telling you guys. To do it. Right. Encouraging you to do mm -hmm. it. But we, and we, come to a middle ground. Even if you make less money when you're running live, and they make more, and they make less when they're running live, and you make more, but there's got to be something you guys can agree to. But, but here's, here's one of the problems. We have existing teletrack contracts with, I think there's four or five of them that we have now, with Max's, Greyhound Park, with uh, um, Dog Track down in 
when you've got these teletraffic agreements. If I'm them, I'm going to want the same deal. You're going to say, all right, we'll reverse our deals. Well, how are they going to know private well, the contracts model. between you guys? Because it's all public. Oh, it is. Okay. It's all public. They're going to they're going to know to take a look at it. They're going to say to us, we want that same deal. And and so, you know, we're kind of torn. We want them to do well. We're doing everything. We've offered this deal. Um, we waited to hear, uh, and, and the director made a decision that it was teletracking, and we said, okay, we'll teletrack, and we'll do the exact same deal. We're not asking for a better deal when it's the reversal. So, well, we I think in your meeting with the authors, you could try and convince them, put pencil to paper, and try and convince them. Well, I, I did yesterday on the phone with Dave Arthur. He and I have a conversation did not end well. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Two but, uh, nice guys like you, it didn't uh, end well. Yeah, didn't end well. But uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm always welcoming to talk again, but I'm just saying uh, it's been conveyed. And, and his, his feeling is I don't want to speak for him, but anyway, he feels that they have a lot of OTBs by then that would be similar by June. But, uh, anyway, thanks for your time. Uh, just to put a bow on it, uh, we only run 32 days. So to say that it's going to be the same, we're only sending our signal for 32 days. He's sending the signal for 120 days. There's a little bit of math involved, but but it, 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 what, what, how ironic that, that, that we'll get a better deal from Churchill Downs and Keeneland and all about everybody else that we can get from the guys down the street. That's the infuriating thing. And, and, uh, and it's, it's unbelievable that, uh, and that we, we tolerate that and that the horsemen would tolerate it. Uh, but that's, the, that's where we live. Uh, the, the second issue is, the, uh, is our monarch issue, which is actually, believe it or not, a bigger issue than the turf signal. <laughs> oh, no. And, uh, and the materials I gave you, we, we proposed a regulation in the manner in which we understand, and that would be Exhibit 3 to Part B, but, but to kind of go over the, 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 the way, essentially we, we want the regulation, we want you all to pass a regulation that says that if a, if a signal comes into Arizona, it has to go to all the permittees. It will not be permitted for an outside company from Canada to pick and choose among the permittees of who gets there as long as we're willing to pay, as long as we're not in default. So that's that's the regulation that we propose. The second half of the regulation deals again with the turf issue, and that is that every signal that turf sends out, every signal that we send out, has to also be offered to the other permittee. It's very it's it's very simple, it's not I don't think it's controversial. It certainly shouldn't be controversial with respect to the other permittees. And, and, and uh, with, go ahead. Just point of clarification, Dave. So you're saying uh, if Monarch sends a signal in to one of our permittees, it's got to offer it to all three, right. or it can't do it to one. Right. Has anybody looked? I, I read it. And First thing that popped into my mind is, you know, group boycott, antitrust issues, by telling three competitors getting together and saying, you have to deal with all of us or none of us. Well, it's actually the other way around, in my opinion. It's when, yeah, I'm when not, one outside competitor, one competitor colludes with an outside signal provider in order to keep out the other permittees. But no, I, uh, I, if it's if it's a you know, one, one of the problems is uh, we don't know how somebody might react. We don't know how turf might react. You just don't know. You never know when you pass a regulation. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's, it's quite common throughout the industry. They do have it in Ohio, for instance. I read the other day. I think in Pennsylvania. Similar statute. Yeah. It, it, oh. They just say if you're going to offer one-to-one, -one, it has to be offered everybody else. Yeah, I, the only concern I had was for the three permittees getting a letter from the Justice Department saying you guys got together as competitors and were <coughs> you entered into a group boycott because we didn't offer, you know, Monarch goes to the Department of Justice and says it's, they boycotted us because we didn't offer it to all three. Well, it's, it, it's 
I, and I know There's nothing an about antitrust. I'm a, I know a little. Yeah. About antitrust. <laughs> I'm but dangerous. One of, the, one of, the, one of the, the principles, I think, is the exemption for legislative activity. And we're not saying that we're getting together with RETO and with TURF and, and coming up with this deal that we're going to write in invisible ink so nobody sees it and then go to Monarch and say, aha, you got to do it. This is, this is legislation or uh, rulemaking which we are uh, advocating, which is exempt from, as I understand, antitrust problems anyway. But, that, but, that'd but, be great. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know any of the exemptions. You guys have been sued enough, is that what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be, be in the paper anymore. <laughs> no, and, I, and uh, you, you know, we, we've, uh, you know, we've given a lot of thought to, once again, we're stymied, and we've had, and you can say, why don't you talk to them, but there's folks on your dais here who have talked to them. Uh, Jay included, and they haven't come around when I say them, talk to Monarch. And we've talked to them, and, and uh, Leroy has talked to them, and uh, Loretta has written to them, and the chaplain has written to them, and the only one who hasn't talked to them, so far as we know, or written to them would be Turf Paradise, because they don't want to. But uh, we've tried everything we can, and we believe this is, this is our next step, the legislative or the rulemaking step. And we believe you can do it as an exception uh, to the Administrative Procedures Act, and I put that in here because it's under... Uh, section uh, 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 5111A, and it's a specific exception to the Administrative Procedures Act, and uh, which otherwise would require a bunch of jumping through hoops. Uh, I, I don't, uh, you, you know, it, it may take a little time, but what we need is we need the order, we need the, the decision to, to make the rule, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe they'll send us the maybe they'll send us the signal beforehand. But what we do know, practically, and, and when you talk about emergencies, um, we don't have anywhere close to the OTB handle right now without having the Monarch signal that we will need to run in beginning in May. We will have to start eliminating days day after day after day so that we have sufficient income to, to run the meet. And it's because for some reason, and maybe for several reasons, that Monarch has refused to give us the signal. So uh, I'm not sure where we stand because we're not on the, the reg we're in the informational area of the meeting rather than the action item meeting. But if, if we can't get it now or get something done today, I would ask that we be on the next emergency meeting, and, and in the meantime, perhaps you can, uh, council can discuss with you whether this is a good idea, and if it's not, or it is, what's another way we can do it? I mean, we're, we want to work with you to get this accomplished. In, in our judgment, it does not require us to go to the legislature. It's a regulation that's specifically allowed under the racing uh, regulations. Almost every other regulation has been done by you as an exception under the Legislative uh, uh, Administrative Procedures Act. And you don't need, don't, I hope you don't say, oh, you gotta go to the legislature. I don't think we do. I don't think we do. And, uh, and if somebody says we do, they gotta prove it to a judge. Dave, can you before this, and I, I do move that, Cassie, we move this item up as well for our special Thank meeting. Thank you. you going to give me a second? Yes. That would be a second by Chair McClintock. So, Commissioner Heupel? Yeah. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Okay, this will be also added to the special meeting. Dave, in the meantime, can you get us, just send it to Cassie and she'll distribute it, uh, a copy of that Ohio Statute, yeah. yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And we're going to continue to talk to Monarch any way we can, every every angle, every every approach. But so far, we've been shut down. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Jerry. This, this is amazing. This is totally amazing. Uh, you know, they've got. They got their issues with there. Right now, there's a moratorium. Is that right, Director? 
in the moratorium. That's correct. Since he's come into office, Doug Ducey has had a moratorium on any new rules. And it's just the way it is. I mean, I could sit and comment and tell you, and could have had Buzz here to tell you the constitutional issues with what this is, what this is talking about. But um, I, I just don't think there's a need because it's clear that there's no new rules. We, we, we'd have a lot of new rules. We have the right to have some new rules. There's things we would be asking for. But there are no new rules under Doug Lucy. Um, it's a period. Am I saying it right? Well, let me clarify. Uh, the governor does have a, a moratorium on rulemaking. However, he's got a list of criteria that an agency has to meet certain exceptions in order to move forward to create rules. So we'd have to look at the matter and see does it need any exceptions. Maybe that would be the best thing and find out if they're receptive at all on the ninth floor before we get into the constitutional issues. But this would, this would be a, a huge constitutional issue. I'm, uh, I'm quite confident there is no constitutional issue, but uh, let us let us deal with the ninth floor too. I mean, we know some people, and, some people, and if we meet the criteria, we'd love to go full speed ahead. But. Uh, I think it's simpler than that because we already have asked for an exemption from the moratorium in making rules and received it. So we can tell a private company who they can sell the property? No, no, no. Maybe put it in that, as far as what you just said about the constitutional issue, just to address that. He would be taking our relation, the reason I haven't gotten involved is I don't know, I, I met Scott to once in my life talked to him many times on the phone, but I met him once. I don't want to have him say to me, hey, you didn't, you didn't understand it either. Maybe we need to teach you a lesson, Turf Paradise. I don't want to be in that position. But I also cannot be, and we would fight vehemently in any forum that they can take away our ability to do business with, does you have the commission or somebody say, hey, we all stand together, you can't do it. If monarch says no, we're not a monarch. I, I couldn't possibly let that ever occur, where we would be saying to monarch, you have to do something you don't want to do, whether you choose to sell to who you do, or we can't take your signal, all your tracks. That means everything they handle, Del Mar, Gulfstream, Santa Anita, Golden Gate, our whole business would be gone if we did it. We just couldn't even exist. They, Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. They've been told when they run as a racetrack that they can have the signal at their OTBs. They have it now at the track, but the day they are actually a racetrack, and there's a previous history there, but I won't get into it. But I just want to say maybe we could get a, a, an answer from the ninth floor if they have, a, or the criteria that, that you would look at and see if this meets it before we get into a whole because it, this, this, this one will be a, a wingding. I'll tell you that. I don't know if that's a formal term. I'm wingding now. This, this, this would be a big deal to be able to tell Santa Anita, I mean, Monarch, who's owned by Santa Anita, that we're drawing a line in the sand. You can't either give it to everybody else and at the same rate, and at the same rate he's proposed. Uh, thank you. How are we done on safety, Greg? I'm going to safety report. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, as I say always, staff is on the backside dealing with the areas of concern. One area that we've alerted, or we'll be getting to alert trainers to, is the issue of the tarps on the outside of the shed rows, which right now some of them are going to consume the ground floor, which blocks the view. So we're going to ask um, these trainers to raise the tarps from the ground up about two or three feet. Um, so that will be coming down the pipe a little bit. As I've mentioned before, and I will mention again, um, we still have reports of leaky roofs. Okay, Still have pothole issues. Last month there were reports of issues in women's bathrooms with um, lack of adequate water pressure and hot water. 
Last month, we reported the drain in front of the training track was in disrepair. It appears to be fixed at this point in time. Staff and current Turf Paradise Security are working well together to protect the backside. There's been a few incidents, but um, I'd like to commend both of them that the security staff, the ours as well as Turf Paradise, seem to be in concert. In the coming weeks, we'll be doing spot checks on the lights in the backside, both early morning and late in the evening, to make sure that the lighting is correct for some of these um, barns. Go on to the equine catastrophic report. Um, we had the second monthly meeting last week. Commissioner, I'm encouraged by the dialogue that we have in these meetings. The next one is set for November 28th at 1 p.m. If you haven't got your email on those that have attended, uh, you'll have it shortly. Um, again, this is a long-term project for the safety of not only the human athlete, but the equine as well. Um, right now, we sit at five fatalities um, during the race week. Four during the races, one in the morning. We are exactly at the same total as we were last year and we need to continue this effort going forward to reduce these fatalities. And if we need to make additional measures, I would hope that all parties would be receptive to that. Thank you. Budget report, Director Casillas. Uh, currently we're on track. Uh, this is going to be the first month that we actually have uh, expenses to pay out, so we're doing fine. Okay, we don't have any extra money you can give to no, sir. <laughs> Committee reports. American Grey Racing. He just left for a moment, but I'll speak a little bit for him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Please um, identify yourself. Alicia Leiser, just on Greyhound Park. As you all know, or probably all of you know, we vote in Florida uh, on the 6th. Uh, eliminates live Greyhound Racing as of December 31st, 2020. We've had three tracks already come out and say that they are going to be racing all the way up to the end. And I can see that because there's nowhere else for these dogs to go besides being adopted out after that. And so many trainers and so many people involved are losing their jobs. And this involves, I mean, the whole industry too, because this goes to sport tech, even, you know, the, who's handling the signal and uh, tow companies and down the line. So it's really sad for the industry. Um, we will be looking, Tucson Greyhound Park is looking to acquire signals from possibly outside the country so that we still continue having enough product for everybody to be interested in. <coughs> Even with Florida closing, we will have six or seven good tracks still running. Um, and hopefully some of them will come back again, too. So, um, you know, maybe Gulf, Gulf uh, Greyhound in Texas will be year-round again. They've been only three months a year. Um, and uh, it's just, it was a sad day for Greyhound Racing. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. There's on the downs. Do you guys have anything to report? <laughs> have you heard enough? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Dave. Thank you for the invitation. County Fair. No report. Rito. <laughs> Tucson Greyhound. Alicia? I did. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> Turf Paradise. We're good to go, Mr. Chair. All right. Too much, too much. <clears throat> the Optional Industry Stakeholder Association updates. Arizona Counties. No report. Arizona Greyhound Racing. Arizona Quarter Racing Association. Can I just report from here, please? Yes, yes ma'am. Just real quickly, uh, just want to let you know that... I'm sorry, uh, identify yourself I'm on the sorry. record. Thank you. My name is Loretta Brazier, Executive Director of the Arizona Quarter Racing. I just want to invite you guys all to come play golf with us after we've had such a, uh, a, a, an interesting meeting here. But I'm going to have a golf tournament on November 30th, and it's uh, for our uh, youth scholarships, and we'd love to invite everybody to come out and golf with us. And other than that... Thank you very much. Looking for sponsors. Uh, yeah, looking for sponsors. <laughs> I want to say good luck to Lloyd. He's got a horse running the Little Rogers Downs this weekend and a big race. And uh, keep those quarter horses going. Arizona Thoroughbred Breeders Association. No report. HBPA. 
I think I've, I've said it many times. The Jockey's Guild. Shoot. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Summary of current events affecting the Arizona Racing Commission. Only commission members or the director may report. No discussion or action may be taken on matters reported unless properly noticed for legal action or discussion. Well, hard to summarize. We have a lot of events affecting us. And, uh, hopefully someday we'll all live in peace. <laughs> Identification of matters to be placed on future agendas. I already have those, sir. The three. Have those. Call to the public. Uh, don't think anybody signed up for that. No, I didn't have anybody up for the public. Okay. The next regular Arizona Racing Commission meeting is tentatively scheduled 10 a.m. on December 13th. No, that, no, would, that would be a special meeting. That would be a special meeting because it's Sorry, not currently. The next special meeting of the Arizona Racing Commission will be on December 13th, 2018, and the next regularly scheduled Racing Commission meeting is going to be on January 13th, 2019. In this room... Tim. How's your glasses work? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm having a stroke. going to be in this room, this building, this time... Tell a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Amen. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Okay, Mr. Heipel? Yes. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. This meeting is adjourned at 12.34 p.m. M. 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 M.